G'day everyone, it's Angela Ramora here. I'm your favorite Australian and the real estate dingo bringing you another, I'm gonna say slightly controversial vlog here. And today I'm going to be talking about the top three reasons why you should never own your own home. So let's get started. So for those of you that have watched my previous vlogs, you will know that I'm a big believer in working hard, saving as much money as you can, and using that capital to start your real estate investing endeavors. I also don't believe in a thing called the American dream. I mean, God bless America, it's the best country in the world, but I think that the American dream is dead or the perception of what the American dream should look like is dead, okay? And that kind of brings me to the first reason why you should never own your own home. And that is, guys, once you buy this half a million dollar property, hypothetically, you're going to have to put down $100,000. Now, $100,000 is going to be the deposit in order to purchase this property. You are going to tie up $100,000 of liquid capital into a property that is not going to produce a return on investment. Now, yes, you can talk as much as you want about capital appreciation and all that jibber jabber BS. I don't really want to get into that right now, but what I want to tell you is this. If you know how to make money in real estate, you should always stay liquid. You should use the $100,000 to buy, fix, and flip, make a $20,000 profit, and now that money that you've got sitting there is not $100,000 anymore, it's $120,000. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Keep buying, fixing, and flipping. Or bloody wholesale the property, or wholesale it, whatever it may be, you don't have to flip. There are a lot of ways to make money in real estate. Money makes money, guys. So I'm begging you, please, use the liquid capital to go out into the market to make more money with it. In my personal opinion, and what I'm going to do one day is when less then 10% of my net wealth purchases my dream property, okay? When 10%, sorry, less than 10% of my net wealth purchases my dream property, that is when I'll pull the trigger on that dream property with cash. And I can tell you right now, my dream property is around four to $5 million, so I will have to have a net wealth of $50 million before I pull the trigger on my personal dream property, okay? I don't want any debt, I actually wanna buy it with cash. So until then, I don't care, I'm happy to rent. I rent a crappy little two bedroom, one bathroom apartment with my family right now. Every spare dollar that I have is out making more money for me, okay? So that's the first reason. The second reason is when you purchase your own home, you will be stuck. You're going to anchor yourself to the ground and you're going to have this big mortgage which is going to feel like an ax over your head forcing you to get out of bed every single day and go to work, go to your nine to five, so you can pay off this mortgage. You will also probably be buying this property in a great little school district, so your kids can go to this school, get good grades, then you're gonna send them to college, and guys, you are just falling for the stereotypical American dream. You've got no mobility. What if there's a change in government? What if there's a third world war? What if you need to move quickly? I mean, there are so many reasons that I could, that I could mention here right now. But guys, let me give you an example of me. I have moved literally like a gypsy. I know it sounds bad, right? But I've moved so many times looking for other opportunities. I'm living in Toledo, Ohio right now out of all of the places. I mean, there's really not that much to do here except invest in real estate and make a ton of money doing it, which I'm doing right now. I've got multiple companies here, but it's a sacrifice that I was willing to make. But anyway, what if you guys get a better job opportunity? Check out Florida, right? Florida, there's no income tax. The Homestead Act protects your, your, your assets. You can go over there and buy a $2 million property, and if, God forbid, you ever get into a civil litigation suit, you're never gonna have, a, you'll, you probably won't be able to lose that property, right? Other states aren't as friendly as that. So look, in my opinion, the world is changing at a rapid pace. You do not wanna throw that anchor. There is so much uncertainty going on in today's day and age. You wanna be flexible, you wanna be mobile, you want to be able to move to where the opportunities are available, either for, for your nine to five, or for business, or for saving on taxes, or for protecting your assets, whatever it may be, okay? So that would be the second reason, guys. I don't want you to be stuck, I want you to be mobile. I would rather you guys rent and invest your money than own and pay off a huge mortgage, which leads me to reason number three, and that is, the expenses. 
And I think that a lot of you out there do not quite understand how many expenses you will incur for owning your own home. Let's just start off with this thing called a mortgage. I've already mentioned before, guys, that once you get into a ton of debt into this mortgage, you will have an ax forcing you to get out of bed every single morning and go to your nine to five so you can afford those mortgage repayments. I don't have to do that, guys. I rent a crappy little two bedroom, one bathroom apartment. All of my liquid capital is out in investment properties, producing more money from, for me, producing more cash flow. And that is how I afford my rent. My investments are affording me to be able to rent, okay? You guys have to go and work a nine to five to be able to pay for your mortgage. How about all of the maintenance expenses? My God, cleaning your gutters, mowing the lawn, the insurance costs. I would never do that. Guys, time is money. I feel sorry for those people mowing their lawn an hour every single freaking week. I would rather be, I don't know, doing this video with you guys or on the phone. Guys, time is money. So there are a lot of expenses that you're going to incur for owning your own home. I would rather you use your liquid capital to invest it in cash flowing investment properties or in buy, fix and flip properties rent a crappy little home or, an, or a condo, whatever it may be. Um, and in, guys, use your liquid capital to invest it and to make more money. Let the tenants cover all of your expenses, whatever expenses you might need. Don't work a nine to five and put your own hand in your own pocket to fix the broken window, to fix the bloody roof or whatever it is that's going to go wrong with your home, okay? So look, I know that this vlog is against popular belief. Um, I'm happy to take whatever criticism you want to throw my way. Um, so please make sure that you comment below. Um, you know what I'd love to hear? I'd love to hear from someone that has successfully purchased their own home, hasn't incurred that many in had that much in expenses, um, and has also got a large real estate portfolio on the side. So I'd love to hear from you folks. And I just want to know how you've structured all of that. Um, so yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. I really appreciate you watching this video. Once again, I'm Angela Ramora. I'm your favorite Australian and the real estate dinger. I'll catch up with you soon.